Let's take a look at a problem where we have to break up our area into two separate integrals. So for example, we're going to find the area in quadrant 1, which is right here, quadrant 1, defined by the graph y equals the square root of x, which is half of a sideways parabola. We'll label that y equals root x. The x-axis, which is right here, and the line y equals x minus 2. I'll put that one in green. Our y-intercept is negative 2, and our slope is positive 1. So this graph looks something like this. This is the graph of y equals x minus 2. So we're looking at this area inside of quadrant 1 defined by these two lines and the x-axis. Well, we have to split up this area. Right now, if we were to take the integral of root x minus x minus 2, we would also be including this triangle below the x-axis. Well, we could do that and then later subtract off the area of this triangle. That's perfectly acceptable, that's fine. Or, what we could do is we could take the integral from 0 to 2, where our line crosses the x-axis, and then take the integral from 2 to wherever these two functions intersect right here. That seems like a more feasible thing to do. So let's take a look here. First we need to figure out where these two functions intersect. And to do that, I'm going to set the square root of x equal to x minus 2. To solve this, we square both sides. So we have x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4. Because we square one side with the square of the entire side. Now we'll subtract x, yielding 0 on one side, and we have x squared minus 5x plus 4. This can be factored as x minus 4 times x minus 1. And so here we have x is equal to both 1 and 4. Well, we're not actually looking for 1 because 1 is to the left of 2. That's right here. That's not, that's not going to happen. We're looking at x equals 4, so that is where these two lines intersect. Plus, if we were to plug 1 back into the original function, you would get 1 equals negative 1, which isn't a solution anyway. So let's take a look at this area. We're taking the integral from 0 to 2, and we want this area between the curve of the square root of x and the x-axis. Well, that is just the integral. So we'll take the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of x dx, and that will give us this region in here. Then we can take this particular region as well. So we'll add on. Here's the integral from 2 to 4, since they intersect at x equals 4. And of course, we take the top minus the bottom. Well, my upper function is the square root of x. And my bottom function is x minus 2 dx. And so here's the setup for the integrals for the area beneath this curve. So the antiderivative of x to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves over 3 over 2, which is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, and this is from 0 to 2. Plus, here we have the antiderivative of x to the 1 half, which is x to the 3 halves over 3 over 2, which is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, the antiderivative of negative x is negative 1 half x squared. And the antiderivative of positive 2, since it's negative and negative 2 cancel out, the antiderivative of positive 2 is positive 2x. And this is from 2 
to 4. So now let's do out the integral. We'll plug in 2 to our first integral. The square root of 2 is root 2. Cubed is 2 root 2 times 2 thirds is 4 root 2 over 3. And when you plug in 0, you just get 0. So that goes away. Plus, let's plug 4 into here. The square root of 4 is 2. Cubed is 8. Times 2 thirds is 16 over 3. 4 squared is 16 times negative 1 half is negative 8. 4 times 2 is positive 8. We'll subtract and then we'll plug in 2. The square root of 2 is root 2 cubed is 2 root 2 times 2 thirds is 4 root 2 over 3. 2 squared is 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. And then 2 times 2 gives us 4. Now we can cancel some things out. We have the 4 root 2 over 3 and the negative 4 root 2 over 3, they go away. Negative 8 plus 8, those two things go away. And we're left with 16 over 3. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Then we have a negative in front, so that becomes minus 2. We can rewrite negative 2 as negative 6 over 3. And 16 over 3 minus 6 over 3 is equal to 10 over 3. And this right here is the area between the curve of the square root of x and x minus 2. That is inside of the first quadrant. Now there is a second way that we could have done this problem. Let's take a look. With some creativity, we could have looked at the integral of root x minus x minus 2. Of course, that would have also included this region down here, this little triangle. But of course, we can always subtract the area of that triangle after the fact. So let's take a look. Here, we've got the integral from 0 to 4 of root x minus x minus 2 dx that's my upper function minus my lower function minus the area of this triangle down here beneath the x-axis. So let's take a look. Here we've got the antiderivative of root x is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 1 half x squared plus 2x and this is from 0 to 4 minus the area of this triangle and here we have a 2 by 2 triangle and of course the area of a triangle is 1 half the base which is 2 times the height which is also 2 so let's plug in our 4 the square root of 4 is 2 cubed is 8 times 2 thirds is 16 over 3 4 squared is 16 times negative 1 half is negative 8 plus 8. When you plug in 0, you just get 0, so we have minus 0, minus the area of this triangle. So here we have the area between the two curves. Now let's take a look at the area of the triangle. 1 half times 4 is 2. Well, negative 8 plus 8 cancels out, and we have 16 over 3 minus 2, which is 10 over 3. So there is a second way that we could have figured out this area, by looking at the area between the two curves, and then subtracting out this unwanted area beneath the x-axis. Of course, there is another way to solve this problem. So far, we've been integrating across the x-axis. But in this problem, it might be easier to integrate with respect to the y-axis. Now, everything 
is the same. The only difference is that we have dy and that our functions have to be in terms of x. So we'll be integrating from a to b of some function x of y dy where a is lower on the y-axis and our b is higher on the y-axis so we'll go from low to high. Now taking the area between curves we'll look at our greater function, the one that's more to the right which is x minus 2 minus my smaller function which is the one that's more to the left that one is root x. Now the problem here though is that each of our functions are written y equals some thing in terms of x. We don't want y equals. Now we want x equals. We want a function x of y. So when we integrate across the y-axis, our function should be of the form x equals and y is now our independent variable. So I'm going to rewrite y equals root x by solving for x. The way to do that is by just squaring both sides. So here we have x equals y squared. So that's this blue function right here. And of course here, to solve for x, we can just add 2. This is x equals y plus 2. All right. So we're taking the integral of y plus 2 minus y squared dy. But now we have to take a look at our limits of integration. We're going from y equals 0, which is the x-axis, up until this point right here where our two functions intersect. Well, this occurred at x equals 4. In order to solve for the y value, just plug 4 back into your function value. So y equals the square root of 4, that means that y equals 2 right here. And of course it also works for your other function. 4 minus 2 is in fact 2. So here we're integrating from 0 to 2 of our green function y plus 2 minus our blue function y squared dy. So here we have the integral from 0 to 2. 0 to 2 of green function which is y plus 2 minus our blue function which is y squared dy and integrating is exactly the same the antiderivative of y is 1 half y squared the antiderivative of 2 is 2y and the antiderivative of negative y squared is negative one-third y cubed. And this is from 0 up to 2. Let's plug in 2. 2 squared is 4 times 1 half is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 cubed is 8 times negative one-third is negative eight-thirds. We plug in 0, the whole thing just becomes 0, so that just goes away. So here we have 6 minus 8 thirds. We can turn 6 into a fraction by multiplying it by 3 over 3 and that's 18 over 3 minus 8 over 3 and lo and behold the answer is still 10 thirds. Look at that. So in this way we have switched our axis of integration by solving for x in terms of y and by looking at our limits of integration along the y-axis. And we can always integrate with respect to y if it seems easier. And in this case, this was much easier to solve with respect to y than having to break it up into two parts or having to look at a larger area and subtracting off some smaller area that is unwanted.